Hands down, the easiest way to have Windows on a Mac is using Parallels. All you have to do is install a file, install Windows, and you're ready to use it seamlessly between Mac and Windows. Let me show you. Okay, so what you're actually viewing right now is my Mac dashboard. That's a Mac OS. And all I did was install a file from Parallels and select the Windows that you want to install. Once it's done, you're ready to go. Now, let me show you how easy this actually is. So on my Mac OS, I'm gonna scroll down here and I've added the Parallels desktop. I'm going to open this up and you're gonna see how easy this actually is to jump from Mac OS to Windows to start using it or use both at the same time. So I'll click play and there we go. It started up Windows. Now I'm on the Windows system. But again, if I wanna jump into Mac, I'll just go down here to my menu and I'll use Mac just like I would. But if I wanna use Windows, I jump into this. And if I want to make it full screen so I don't get mixed up, there we go. Now I'm just on the Windows 11 system that I've installed. Now, one of the things I like about it is that the files that you have on the Mac OS, you have them available here on the Windows system. So this is the desktop that I have on my Mac, but I have the same files over here, plus the files, the installations that I've made for the applications over here. For example, I've installed Chrome already here on the Windows system. So it's not the same Chrome that I have on Mac. And if I want to open a video here on the Windows system, I go ahead and do it. And there we go, it just opened it up. Now, if I wanna do something else, I can view other files. I have some GIFs over here. I have some other videos that I've made. So for example, the Jupyter X one, I can see it there. And it's available just like that. And if I need to view anything that's happening on Windows, I'll just click on the Start menu from Windows and I'm able to do it. And there's even updates on Windows, just like you would on the systems having the system of Windows only. So for example, here's some installations that I need to do, but I'm not going to do them right now. So there's some security updates and all that, and they're available to do so right there. If I need to download something from the Microsoft Store, well, I can do so here. It's just like having a Windows system, but inside of Mac. So let's get out of the full view mode. Let me go up into here. Oops, there we go. Let's make it smaller. And we have some extra features inside of the Windows window from the Mac OS, on the Mac OS. So on the parallel system, we have this. There's the shortcuts. You can customize these if you wanna change them up. There's the CPU usage. You can see that there. So for example, if you, if you have a lot of usage for the CPU load, check it out here. But in this case, I don't have anything open, so there's no CPU usage. There's the disk image if you want to change that up there. The network, the speakers, the microphone, the disk, the camera, and this one's pretty useful. For example, if you don't want the files to be in both systems, so for example, if I have some files here on Windows, and I don't want them to be available on the Mac system, I'll just turn this off and it'll remove them from the Mac OS system. So that's pretty cool. We need to close this up, it's available. Some settings available there for more fine tuning and tweaking. If you need to download files for the Windows system and for Windows only, they will work. So if you wanna download something that's only available for Windows, that is possible. And it'll work just like it would on a Windows system. Now, outside in the Mac OS where we have parallels, we have these available tools. So for example, there's different type of views for the parallel system. You can enter in coherence systems. So for example, both are going to be working seamlessly. So in this case, I'm in the Mac OS, but if I click on the Windows system, I'll get, for example, the start menu over here. And if I need to open up something, that's available there. For example, the calculator, there we go. And it just opened it up. This is a system from Windows and I'm inside of the Mac OS, so it's working both of these at the same time, but still I'm on my Mac OS system in this case, because it's working in coherence system. So I'm able to open up systems, check out things, power it down if I want, and I can get out of this mode, exit coherence. There we go, we have Windows back again. There's also other type of views, for example, full screen, which you saw already. The picture in picture, which is pretty useful because you're on the Mac OS and you're viewing your picture in picture here from the Windows system. We can go ahead and remove that picture in picture. And again, we have more settings for this. Let me go ahead, more settings for this. So for example, we can view, whoops, my bad, Windows, use all displays in full screen, retina resolution, take screenshots, some actions. So if you wanna restart this, suspend it, pause it, etc. You got all these options available. The devices that you might have it installed or connected to the computer, you're available you in there sound output, microphone, camera, sharing, keyboard, etc. Configuration, control center, preferences for the parallels system. For example, general preferences, shortcuts, devices, security, network, advanced, etc. And there's a toolbox, which I'll show you in a bit. 
Let me show you a little bit more. Let's go back into Windows. There's also the help, check for updates. Updates are frequent, so that's a really good thing because they're always up to date. And yes, it's available for the MacBooks that have the M1 and M2 chip, which I am on the M1. That's a cool thing that we have. Check for updates about parallels, quit parallels, etc. Um, let me shrink this. And in the preference, there's a toolbox that we have available. Let me go ahead and open this up. Let's go back into Windows. I'll open up my toolbox here. And these are like extra tools that Parallels gives you. So it's pretty cool because there's the break time, download video, capture area, record screen, transform text, free up memory, and a lot more tools. So if I go into library, we're able to view all the tools that are available with this system. And that's included when you have a license of Parallels. A lot of useful tools that you can put them in the dashboard if you want to use them quickly. So for example, recognize, recognize text, record area, screenshots, step timers, sleepers, uninstall apps, etc. I mean, there's all of these things. Now you can see on the back end, Windows just paused because I'm not using it. So it's not using the load on my CPU or the RAM. That's pretty cool because it saves on that system. If you want to exit the toolbox because you don't want to use it, you just go ahead and quit it. Let's go back into Windows. I'll click on it and I'm ready to use it again. Now I'll go ahead and close this up. Let's quit Parallels Desktop. And I'm back on the Mac OS. So that easy to open up Windows and use it. If I want to go ahead and you open it up again, I'll do so. And it's super quick. Here we go. I'm able to use Windows now. That's how easy it is to use Windows on a Mac. Now, if you want to grab a deal that's going on, I will be leaving a link in the description. Well, I thank you all for watching and I'll see you on my next videos.